This is, this is a, this is a uh, panel discussion on the uh, Wall Street occupation. And, and, but it's more so than that because in some ways this is the Wall Street occupation moved over here to Brooklyn for, for a little visit, I would say. I'm, I'm not as actively invo involved in the occupation as the people here sitting next to me are. I've gone there uh, a few times to do some, do some educational work, largely because I was asked to do so. And, but I find her, and the RP people should wake up, RP was asked to give talks at the occupation. That's the first time an activist group has contacted us in such an immediate way for a call to action. And I think that's a testimony to actually what's going on in the real world. Uh, some of the people involved in the occupation were smart enough or did enough research that they knew there was such an organization of the Union for Radical and Political Economy. They realized there was a value important for radical economic education and they contacted us and, therefore, and, they, and as a response to that, I could not, 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 not help, help but meet, 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 meet their call. And I think the challenge to all of this kind of, uh, I'll call new old lefty organizations which are around, is to respond, respond to this call for action which is coming here. I was uh, actually uh, 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 give, give a radio talk, give a talk, talk about the occupation and about this conference uh, at 12:30 this morning. I guess what's, what's the California NPR station KPFA? Yeah. They gave me gave me a call, and I'm basically going to repeat what I said, uh, said 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 to them. And I'm this is why I'm be part of my educational job because I'm supposed to be the economic heavy. Uh, you know, why does economic matter? And, and why is the economy such a drag on what we want to do? I mean, a, really the full weight of the past lies in the economy. Why is the economy so important and why is it so hard to change? It's because we live it. It's because we have to work and we have to survive in this capitalist system regardless of whether we want to or not. We have no choice but to work and live and struggle. And that really gives a profound conservative nature to everything we do. This is something that Gramsci says someplace in one of his, in his prison notebooks. We have to survive and that therefore is a profoundly conservative nature to what we do and that's tied up with economic activity because we have to work and struggle to survive and that's something we should begin with. And what are the conditions in which we have to work and struggle and survive right now? They're abysmally bad. We all know that. And, and I don't really pretty much care about what's going on on Wall Street, but I do care, care about what the collapse of Wall Street means to us. And, and this is something I give in a presentation about the, the economic crisis at a, at a public forum in, in conservative Staten Island where we had about four, three or 400 people. And I emphasize these two statistics. One is the unemployment rates. And I presented unemployment rates, graphing the unemployment rates. And, and by borough in the city of New York, to get some sense, make it concrete what it was. And also I got some data on foreclosures by boroughs. And I even got, you can get foreclosure, foreclosure data by zip code. And it's amazing, you should actually go around and, and walk your street. I did this in my neighborhood in Statland. Walk your street to see the number of foreclosed homes. They're all over the place. And our economy is not going to go anywhere until we get rid of unemployment, until we get stop those foreclosures. That's one thing I told, I said over the radio. The second thing I didn't emphasize enough, but emphasize this here, and this is what I think that the occupation is all about. One of the things I think is going on among our powers that be, and you see this in the political bickering, this is all the political bickering is all about, I don't even think they have real solutions to their own problems. There is, there is kind of a paralysis going on there. They don't even know how to, sal how to solve their own problems. Or I'll qualify that. Maybe they do have a solution to solve their own problems. But whatever solution they give is not going to be acceptable to us. Well, there really hasn't been a space for the American public, for the American public to even talk about their problems. Um, well, the, that's, that's, no, that's the language that's of exactly discourse in this country. Is. That's, the, that's exactly, exactly what, the way I, what, I, the way I understand, understand what the occupation is about. It, it is, an, is an opening 
an eruption of a different kind of truths and realities, and I can wax philosophical and talk about Badu and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's an event truth. But I, but I think, I think, I think some, 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 something's going on there. And there's an, I think, I think what has come forward in an interesting kind, kind of way from the occupation is, is there's a sense, sense that the powers that don't be have a solution to their own problems, which, which is acceptable to us. And therefore, there is a new need for new and need, new need for education. Academia need to be able to engage in the conversation, and that is exactly what Occupy Wall Street is. That's why it's a leaderless movement. We don't have. There is not one person who can be arrested and end the movement tomorrow. And that is what most. What is mo one of the most exciting things about what we are all doing? Everybody in this room who showed up today, we are all a part of this, and that's why there's hope for this movement to actually move forward and succeed and make real change happen in this country. Because as we've been trying to tell people, it's an occupation. We're not leaving until there's systemic change. Right. So, and that is what we're here to talk about today. Um, I, I'm really happy to be and honored to be a part of this panel with Chris and John. John is a New York City High School math teacher. He has a math and economics degree from Fordham University, and he has a political science degree from Brooklyn College. He began organizing in May. After decades of research and letter writing, he has also worked in the lower echelons in finance and as a music recording engineer. Can you turn that I'm off? I'm trying to. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, um, we're also here today with Jackie DeSalvo, who it, we are honored to be among. She has been working on the Labor Support and Outreach Working Group for um, Occupy Wall Street. She's an associate professor of English at the Baruch uh, graduate and Graduate Center at Brew College and the, and the Cooney Graduate Center. She's retired. She is now an adjunct. Um, she's a published scholar and has worked among other um, stalwart organizations, Students for Democratic Society. Um, my name, uh, oh, and we're waiting for one other. Hopefully he'll come. I'll give your, his, um, his uh, bio when he comes. My name is Grim Woman. I'm working under an assumed name with the occupation because um, I work professionally as an investigative wealth researcher for the top New York City cultural institutions. I am an information science graduate student at Columbia. I'm a single mother and an unemployed strategic communications and research professional, just saying it. Um, so yeah, so we would like to talk today a little bit about how we got to Occupy Wall Street. Um, the first thing, I don't know if a lot of people know this, this there was actually a call to action by the, um, by the magazine Adbusters, uh, which is known for kind of its cheeky treatment of corporate, uh, the corporate world. I would say corporate America, but it's really the entire world that suffers under their tyranny. Um, and so they put out a call. They said, we want to see 20,000 people flood into Wall Street. That's it. Publish it to the web. See what happened. Put up some posters. Um, it started flying around uh, social media channels on um, Tumblr, Reddit, uh, Twitter, and Facebook, and which is how I personally found out about it. Um, and so people, this, so they just so um, uh, the General Assembly was formed in New York by a group of individuals, and meetings started in Tompkins Square Park to plan events and how to plan for 20,000 people to come into Wall Street. <laughs> what do you do? When did you start? When did I when start? Did that that group started, I think, in July, is what I've been told. I'm not exactly sure, though. Yeah. yeah. The, the early history. Yes, please. Uh, Jackie knows a lot about that, too. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a, a coalition of organizations called New York Against Budget Cuts. New York. New York Against Budget Cuts. Uh, and they have a lot of projects all over the place working with unions and uh, other groups that are trying to work from the ground up in the city. Uh, me and Chris were working with a, an affiliate of theirs called Staten Island. Staten Islanders for Real Budget Solutions. Uh, we put on a big town hall in Staten Island that was pretty successful. Uh, New York Against Budget Cuts, uh, after the May 12th marches, they put on a uh, an occupation across the street from City Hall for three weeks. I don't know if anybody heard about that. It was pretty much news blocked out also. Uh, it was called Bloombergville. And uh, a lot of the expertise for how to occupy the streets here came out of Bloombergville, especially through, from a group called uh, uh, Picture the Homeless that had done similar things before. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. He did it. Somebody explain what that means. There's a fire alarm. There's a malfunction in the building. There's a malfunction in the building. I think they're scared of our idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so too. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, the CIA set that up. Anyway, so. Working on it for a week. They did disrupting classes and everything. Really? Anyway, so uh, when the uh, debt, uh, when the debt after Bluebirdville was over, after the city budget went through, when the uh, debt thing was coming to a head, uh, the national debt crisis, basically caused by crazy uh, Tea Party types. Sorry if anybody's here. Uh, <coughs> was coming to a head. It was the deadline was August second. So a whole bunch of groups, I think independently, decided to show up at the Bull on, on Broadway to protest this thing. And when we all came together, we basically had a general assembly. Uh, New York Against Budget Cuts works under that system. Uh, the Bloombergville occupation worked under that system. So we had a general assembly, and the call from Adbusters had just come out, and we had that general assembly decided that we are going to occupy Wall Street on the 17th. And so we planned the next general assembly, and everybody, like a hundred activists from all over the freaking world, showed up there. And uh, we've been working under on a consensus basis since then, and it's been pretty fabulous. Yeah, and so what's been, what was amazing on September 17th, we were there, um, my daughter and I was there, we were both there on September 17th, there weren't a lot of people after the initial march into Zuccotti Park, which I don't know if that was intended for us to start camping at Zuccotti Park, but after they started clearing us out in Bowling Green, that's where everybody kind of dispersed to. Um, one of the uh, tactics that the movement has started to use is dispersion into other spaces when police presence becomes overwhelming, which with social media is incredibly easy to do because you just communicate with your phone, we're going here. And so then everybody dispersed out to Zuccotti Park. And, um, and the first night there was kind of electric. There were only about 100, maybe 150 people in sleeping bags or just hanging out. Um, 215, actually. I 215? Okay. 6 on Sunday morning. Nice, <laughs> nice. It would have been 216 if I had stayed. I was there <laughs> until 5. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then people have just kept coming. And at that point, on the next day on Sunday, random people were coming to the park to give us food. Like, I had a woman give my daughter and I a half of a pizza that she and her, her daughter had just finished and said, please stay here, we need you to stay here. Just a random woman comes up to us. Um, and so the kids, they keep coming. And it's so beautiful because they are there night after night with police surrounding them with riot cuffs. Um, the, uh, many of them are from out of town and they don't even know New York City. And it is heartbreaking to watch them and to watch what they've been putting up with because it's been raining on them, it's been cold, and they are not sleeping, and it's but really one astonishing. The, one of the great things about it is, is because they're living there, yeah. there's a different kind of relationship that you ha than you have in movements where you just go and show up for a meeting for a couple of hours and then in action. They're having to organize life. And they're doing it with a lot of forethought about how they'd like life to be organized. And consideration for each other, which is something that is so rare yeah, in our modern to, world. They've had to provide sanitation. They've had to provide food. They've had to provide bedding. They've had to, and they, mainly they've had to work at how a, how a community can function in this kind of an oppressive society where we have to live by many of its rules to try how far you can go by, to live by a different set of rules, to, to create a different set of ways of being together. And I find that um, there's a great deal of wisdom in these young people. Uh, for, I think a lot of it, uh, I would give credit to the women's movement, that a lot of the sensitivity that developed about relationships in the women's movement has been absorbed by both male and female youth. And they're, they have, uh, like at Bloombergville, we had a, a, a civility code. And it was amazing the things that they thought of. I mean, the key was, you know, respect 
for everyone, but they, they got into real details about how you talk to each other and how you listen to each other. And um, I, I, and, and they're hosts, they're hosts. Every day, they are the hosts for hundreds or yesterday thousands of people. And they're functioning as wonderful hosts. They're feeding anybody who comes in off the street. And one other thing that I would like to tell you guys why this is going so right for us right now, Zuccotti Park is privately owned by Brookfield Properties. When they proposed to the city that they start up this public space for the city that they would own, they had to agree to the city that it is open 24 hours for the public's use. <laughs> so because of that, we can stay there forever. <laughs> Maybe we should say something about the General Assembly. We because should talk that about has a lot to do yes. with the culture. We I'm should talk, because you talked about the origins of it and I, how I it's actually it. running now. I have a pretty good one. The uh, General Assembly is a leaderless organization. It's run by rotating facilitators. So uh, we have facilitated training so that the people that do it are generally pretty good at it. Um, there's uh, usually between 100 and four or 500 people at these meetings. Uh, that we're not allowed to have um, a bullhorn or any kind of sound amplification. So we use a thing called the, the people's microphone. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this on TV, yeah. but <clears throat> which works very well. And in fact, when I, they went, yesterday when there was thousands of people there, they were doing it in waves so that one person would talk and then the next group would, would repeat it and the next group after that would repeat it. And it was like four repeats for every phrase. It was amazing. But uh, so it's a... It's a highly organized way of having everybody talk. You basically go through, we have the working groups present, and then there's announcements, and then we ha set an agenda democratically by having people uh, suggest agenda items. Um, the, uh, the system works by consensus, so if everybody likes something, uh, we all go like this. And if people don't like stuff, we go like this. And if you're on the fence, you go like this. We do this so that everybody's not clapping all the time because and clapping if takes up time. It, you go like this. Right. And you can uh, stop the consensus. Right. So if you if you're trying to reach consensus and somebody really thinks it's a horrible idea, then you can block <coughs> it and then it goes to a vote, which right now is a, a, a ninety percent vote. You need a ninety percent vote to overturn a block. Um, what am I missing? So, right, so uh, there's also uh, basically, you know, people get up and make proposals, which you can block or whatever. And we do, we, uh, if you make a proposal, then we have questions about the proposal so people can talk, uh, raise questions. And then if people have problems with it, we can go through concerns. And uh, people, people can make friendly amendments or uh, non friendly amendments depending basically on the person who made the proposal. And uh, <coughs> if, uh, if people think that things are going wrong, for example, if, if somebody thinks that we're not following the process, if somebody's off point or something, then you can do this, which is called point of process. And the facilitator is supposed to stop and find out what your process problem is. If, uh, if somebody uh, talks about something that they're not sure about and you know what the information is, then you can do this, which is a uh, point of information. And uh, then they'll call on you, and you can fill in the missing gaps or make a correction if necessary. In the beginning, I didn't have much faith in this kind of an open process. I have been completely converted. Um, I thought we're never going to come to any decisions. You know, it takes so long to do everything. In fact, it's gotten more and more efficient. People have learned how to sharpen the process, so a lot of the work gets done outside and the decisions can be made in the general assembly. Now, the way in which the work gets done outside is really interesting because anybody can propose a working group and just recruit people to join it and they have a range from the most practical to the most utopian uh, with everything in between. I mean, if we can think of the names, I happen to be the labor uh, outreach working group. Um, there, uh, direct action, planning our marches. There's sanitation and food and comfort. There's a psych group. There's a medic group. Uh, some of them I don't even understand. People, media. Me, there's a media group, but some of them are more like 
visionary and um, intellectual. A whole bunch of groups have come together around the part that has been the hardest and that I was most suspicious and discontented with, which is what is our message. But there was a certain message implicit in going to Wall Street. It's a very advanced message. It's a message we never got to in the 60s, which is taking on the economic establishment yes. as, a, as the whole mass. This, we're against the 1%, we're, we're the 99% forces you to figure out what are the relationships between all those different groups in the 99% to the 1%. And the latest document that's been generated has been a list of grievances which have been, people have all contributed to all the ways in which our capitalist corporate system oppresses us. And you can get a copy of that in the newly published Occupied Wall Street Journal, available today <laughs> at Zuccotti <laughs> Park, published in conjunction with The Independent. There 50, are 50,000 copies, there'll be plenty to go around. <laughs> but there were a number of groups working on message. A lot of it was worked on in the listserv, and, I, and yeah. as we started to get into it, are we going to have demands? What kind of demands? Are we just going to have goals? I thought, this is impossible. I'm going to go crazy. But what's happened is the most brilliant conversation is going on as people try to solve the problems between these different approaches and different angles to things. And there's a, the underlying, people don't want to talk about ideology. That's part of the, the culture. But in fact, there's an underlying ideology and an underlying analysis. And it, it comes out in different ways in these different groups. And there have, if you come against a contradiction, you struggle with it and you learn so much while you're struggling with it. We're very close to having a message. I, uh, I have the list of grievances here with me. There, it's a long list. Um, but people but are really getting the message. I mean, the, the message, the reason why we're there is a large part of it is this anti-corporate this anti-corporatism that brings us all together. And basically, if you, uh, uh, by addressing that, everything else falls on underneath it. Because everything has been caused, everything stems from this. These are businesses that are more important than governments around the world right now. So, yes. I'd like to speak to that, because I think that you put your finger on the most important thing. You are on Wall Street, and you're talking about Wall Street and corporations dominating our system. We have corporate government today. And people know that, and they're interested. They know it in various degrees. And what you're doing is opening the door for an understanding of the connection between. And this can become world this can become all over the country. It already because has. This is a problem facing everybody in this country. There are 75 places that are organizing. Okay. You can go to OccupyTogether.org to find out about groups all over the country. 50 people were arrested in Boston this morning. Um, in Pershing Square, there's over 200 people right now in Los Angeles, and it's only going to get bigger. Or you can go to Take the Square. Also worldwide. And yes. you find the worldwide. And it's amazing how one of the things that encouraged us in the beginning when we didn't know if we could pull it off, who knew if anybody was going to show up September 17th, is the Spaniards immediately said they were going to their financial district on the 17th. And some of the Spaniards were marching to Paris. The Parisians were going to welcome them on September 17th. Um, that there was a tremendous response from around the world. What about uh, the color line, which is so well, that's, that is going to be dealt with by the labor movement because the working class in New York City is overwhelmingly black and Latino. And the kind of youth movement we have is not representative of the city, although we've had numerous black speakers and movement people I come and talk to us. People, it's, it's about to change drastically. Well, if people were actually at Zuccotti Park, you would yeah. see the extent to which it is not white. It's a very New York City <coughs> occupation. I think it's that journalists white. have been strategically... But it won't be. No. I'll tell you, the postal <laughs> workers say that they will change literal the literal complexion of the park. It's promised to me by Chuck Slatkin, their political director. That's one of his goals, is to change the, the, the complexion of the skin of the park. We went to the postal workers. 
when they had a rally, they're going to come to us, and as we involve the working class, it's going to solve a lot of it. I just wanted to ask, I understand there's going to be some kind of major uh, union march this week? Yeah, October 5th. Which is uh, what? Wednesday. Wednesday. There's a group called uh, A Strong Economy for All, which is a coalition that did May 12th march through Wall Street. It involves a couple of unions and a lot of community groups, and they're going to start at City Hall uh, around 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then march to Zuccotti Square. There are other ways in which the colored thing is being challenged. Jitu Wiusi, who's a longtime activist, Jitu Wiusi, who's a longtime activist in Brooklyn in the black community, came and was introduced to the group, and then he shot an email back that he li liked to bring his congregation and the minister to do a non-denominational service tomorrow. But so we're getting responses from the black community. Unemployed working class youth, with all due respect to Chuck Slatkin and so on, which I know very well, the fact of the matter is they're not, they didn't have demonstrations for their own workers in the postal that were being laid off with any energy and fire and diversity of composition. I mean, we have to be somewhat honest. Um, it takes a but while. Everything's take, happening Jackie, very slowly. Jackie, did just one thing. The masses of unemployed, thoroughly impoverished, many who have not been allowed into the working force, have a significant population in this city and with all the respect and affection and encouragement for Take Back Wall Street. It's not been there. So I'm just. It takes time. Well, know that. I'm just okay, okay, another thing I'm that we're in the house. Everybody's aware of, uh, and everybody is thinking about how to work on it. It is not a failure of consciousness. Okay, but another thing I just it sounds accusatory to me. Okay, ladies, I think we can agree to disagree <laughs> on this point. We're not, we haven't I, uh, okay, 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 but another thing larger picture to try to address You'll this is there are four so other marches that, that are happening like that, today. Right? And we are trying, Occupy Wall Street as a group are trying to encourage people to come to Zuccotti Park so that every, as their after party for their marches, we have sent out a call to everyone so that everyone can have a space in which they can talk about their various issues that they have. I also am of the opinion, I've been in the park a lot, that the, that the, um, the journalists have been uh, very careful to take pictures of just white college students because then it diminishes and, the and the freakyish looking there? ones. Have you been there? Yes, constantly. Okay, good. I'm glad. So I, you know, this is a this is something. You know, one of the greatest things lines that I heard was actually on a video to Slut Walk uh, that's happening right now. Um, this woman said, "You know what?" we need to stop fighting within each other because it's harder to fight patriarchy when we're fighting ourselves. Yeah. It is harder to fight corporations when we are fighting ourselves. We have to overcome the racial problem in this country or there is no hope for the working class or the middle class. Everybody should be aware of that. You know, those of us who are organizing there are highly conscious of it. But I think you'll the, find we that haven't the, found, yes, we haven't worked out the strategy yet but it's not just the postal workers. The 1199 is coming. They're black and brown. There's uh, 32BJ is but coming. We're, we're They're black and brown. Right, but, but Jackie, and the youth Jackie, will Jackie. be reached. We're also talking about a younger generation which does not see race in the same way that our elders do. Mm -hmm. We don't. And it is not as much of an issue of bring in the black and the brown because we're there already. And one of the main problems that we've been having, and I'd like Chris and um, John to possibly speak to this, is that with the lack of demands. We've touched on this a little bit, but I thought since you're a little bit more involved with the GA, John, you would be a great person to lead this. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, there's like five groups trying to make demands. Uh, I, I want. Yeah. Uh, we actually, on, on Thursday night, a list of grievances was formally uh, uh, accepted by the GA, and that's on the website now. So there's a list of things that we don't like about corporations. Uh, it's um, NYC. You want the grievances? NYC. I don't want to read all the grievances. NYCGA.cc. Yes, that's one, of the, so that's, that's one of the. That's one of the new. Uh, visit the website cannot be traced. You can write it on the board behind you. N Y C G A D. 
Or you no, can go no, online no. here. I'll put it right here. Wait. Put both uh, websites I'll up. I'll put everything up. I'd like to say one thing about the racial make makeup of the place. One thing is that there's a lot of foreigners there. We have all sorts of visitors from Spain and Greece. Uh, Immigrants, too, from those uh, countries. There's people from all over the country there. I think that if we had ever gotten any kind of press before the police started beating on anybody, that maybe people from other parts of the city would have known about it. Um, we are most radically bunch of inclusive people I ever met in my freaking life and we all get along and we all want everybody to come there okay everybody we want everybody who cares about their planet to come to Wall Street and help us that's what we're looking for we're not sending anybody away because of what they look like or even what they believe in okay we like people, we have very intelligent conversations almost all the time with each other about very important things and we're trying to fix the world and that's what's important to us, not what you look like, not what your religion is or whatever, anything like that. Um, what was I supposed to talk about? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the GA is slow. If you go to a General Assembly meeting, you're going to be like, I remember on the first week, we sp the cops wanted us to take a poster off the wall, and it took us an hour to agree to take the poster that off a tree, off the trees. <laughs> but like, what I like to say about the GA is it's slow like a river. Because once we reach consensus, there's no stopping us, okay? Like the Mississippi River, if you just sit on it, it's going to take forever, but there's no stopping the Mississippi River, okay? So it takes a long time. Um, the demands are taking a long time, and there's a, a lot of groups working on demands right now. Right now we have a list of grievances that the GA has, has agreed to. It's on, it's on uh, probably a few of these websites by now. Um, they're all about corporations. I don't want to read this whole thing to you. There are it's kind of long. If somebody wants to come up and look at it. But there have been two, two kind of slogans that have appeared and reappeared. You put one of them on frequently. Um, and one is uh, human needs, not corporate greeds. And the other is democracy, not corporatocracy. So it, it's about a redistribution of wealth. And it's about uh, you know some kind of social democracy at least, and it's about a uh, an attempt to at least partly democrat dem redemocratize our system, which will never be democratic. So as long as we have these corporations, but an attempt to reverse some of the incredible domination that has developed. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll read you some key words. This is basically uh, let's see the big first. Uh, paragraph is, as we gather together in solidarity to express a feeling of mass injustice, we mu must not lose sight of what brought us together. We write so that all people who feel wronged by the corporate forces of the world can know that we are your allies. And the issues are uh, illegal foreclosure process, bailouts from taxpayers and uh, executive bonuses, uh, inequality and discrimination in the workplace, poisoning the food supply, uh, stripping employees of the right to negotiate. Uh, they have uh, tens of thousands of dollars of loan debt for each student, uh, outsourcing labor and using that as leverage to cut uh, health care ben benefits and pay, uh, influence of the courts by corporations, uh, uh, lawyers and lobbyists that they can afford that we can't, uh, selling our privacy, uh, using the military and police to uh, prevent freedom of the press around the world, uh, determining economic policy, destroy catastrophic failures, donating large sums of money, uh, blocking alternate forms of energy, blocking generic <laughs> medicine, covering up oil spills, accidents, faulty bookkeeping, and inactive ingredients in pursuit of profit, keeping people misinformed and fearful through control of the media, 
uh, accepting private contracts uh, to murder prison prisoners, and uh, I think we're in putting also in the uh, industrial uh, uh, prison complex, which is uh, privatization of uh, of the prisons that most of you should probably know about. Um, participating in torture and murder of innocent civilians overseas, and you know it's. It's not an, an exhaustive list. There's plenty of other things that will probably be added to it. There's also going to be, we also have a, a set of principles that we're working on, and there's a list of concrete economic demands towards the U.S. government that people are also working on. And uh, there's people that don't, there's people within the organization that think we ha should have no demands, okay? According to, according to some of us, the, the, uh, the process is the demand. The process itself, how we do things, is supposed to lead the way to a better, better uh, way of doing things. What am I missing? I just want to uh, say, the, this is a living document. It's not done. It's not perfect. It has its flaws. I have a couple of corrections. And I'm in the process of negotiating with the work group. Uh, but it, you can see the way in which action and practice develops your understanding. We got beat up last Saturday. So we had a rally, a huge rally at, at Police Plaza against police brutality. But who are the speakers? People of color. Because they know more about police brutality than we will ever know. And they have movements. <laughs> and their movements are coming into relationship with Occupy Wall Street. Uh, so that's the way it grows. It, it's a living process. We didn't start out knowing what we were going to do. Uh, one of the major organizing tools, which is bring, bringing people in from around the country, is this Tumblr blog, which I, I put up briefly and settled on because it's amazing. How do you spell Tumblr? Tumblr. It's uh, We Are the 99% Tumblr. Uh, T-U-M-B-L-R.com. The reason why it is so, um, it's so effective is because we are getting submissions from all over the country for this blog. We right now have 20 pages and counting of people sending in their stories, why they are the 99%. And they are heart out there. Oh. heartbreaking. Oh, so they're in? Yeah. Oh, so. And they're heartbreaking. And the comments that we've gotten from people around the country are just as heartbreaking. Everybody has a story to tell why they are part of the 99%, why the system is not working for them anymore. And if you just take half an hour on the site, you'll see it's not just white college students, it's mothers, it's fathers, it's veterans, it's everyone. We've got and homeless people living there because they have no place else to live. And people no, from across really. the country are sending this around to each other and it has really tied people together to get them to unite around this. And this is one of the reasons why uh, the Nationwide Occupy Together movement has a real shot at changing things. As people go into their fi financial centers of their town across the country and occupy them. This is something that cannot be ignored, especially in the age of the internet. Um, and we're on internet time. It is my hope, personally, after coming together to this, that by December we start seeing congressional hearings. Um, because we'll have the evidence, i.e., we are the 99%, not sponsored by lobbyists, but put together by the American people. Yeah, it's interesting that the question that we keep asking and talking about, that the media never asks people in the square, is why are you against the corporations? How have they hurt you? They would get a lot of material. <laughs> they would get a lot of material. If you talk to people, there are a lot of stories of oppression. You know, these young people, many of them, what differentiates it from the 60s for me is that a large part of the movement was a student movement and it had privilege. You know, uh, not everywhere, but a lot of it, some of it came out of Harvard, you know. Uh, the working class kids often didn't have the luxury of engaging in so much movement stuff, except like in the civil rights movement, it's a whole other story. But even now, we have a white paper that we've been trying to put around uh, these channels by one of the presidents of the Federal Reserve saying, you know what, those banks are too big and they should fail and they should be broken up into local banks. The, the, stu the people who are there now, a lot of them are young people who are unemployed, 
underemployed or putting together a couple of part-time jobs. The reason they can be there is they're unemployed, uh, underpaid, and they feel that their grievances are similar to the grievances of the working poor of, both ra of all races. And we have free food. <laughs> yeah, there are people who really are bringing real survival needs to, to the uh, I'd also like to point out that the media keeps saying that there's 200 people there. <laughs> First of all, on, fr on, on Friday morning, there was at least 450 people there at 7 o'clock in the morning. Because I know, because I counted the 250 people the week before, and there was way more than double that on Friday morning where I woke up. Um, the, even that is only the tip of the iceberg. There's a constantly rotating uh, stream of people coming in and out. There's all of us that work at home all the time in support of numerous things. I mean, while you put this paper together, you weren't in the park. Right? No, no. Okay. We had a There's very nice uh, organization that that housed us for a few days so that we could put together the the paper with a bunch of media professionals. And Chris Hedges has an article in it in support of it, saying that if you are not on the side of Occupy Wall Street, you will be on the wrong <coughs> side of history. <coughs> so. Yeah. So there's an enormous, tremendous nationwide effort happening right now. I wanted to talk, if it's okay now, a little bit analytically about a kind of wider historical context. I was very excited when I saw that the teachers in Madison were occupying the Capitol. I got in the car and my husband and I drove out there because I come out of Madison. And when I heard that it was the graduate teaching assistants that had led the takeover of the Capitol and I was there when the graduate teaching assistants formed the first union of graduate teachers assistants and shut down the university in a strike for recognition that was supported by all the students because they made it also into a strike against the war. It was the time of the incursion into Cambodia and it inspired the um, people who work in the cafeterias to go out on a strike for recognition. Um, that is one of the main sources of Bloombergville and of this encampment. They were at a point when they were removed from the Capitol, which has a rule like this park that they're supposed to be able as the public to be there at any time. But at a certain point, they came up with some reason. They built a tent city outside the uh, building and called it Walkerville after Governor Walker who was taking away their collective bargaining rights and after the Hoovervilles of the uh, 30s. And that's where we got the inspiration for Bloombergville, which then fed into Occupy uh, Wall Street. The movement of the 60s was largely a youth movement. Um, it was, a lot of it was middle class, although there was a lot of people who had dropped out of the middle class. What we have now are people who've been either working class or been pushed out of the middle class. A lot of them tell me that they're not going to live the way their parents lived, that they can't, they have college degrees, they can't get those kind of jobs anymore. Um, so the, um, they, the, Madison was unusual, and I think this is part of the history that led to the takeover of the Capitol, in that the student movement was a labor movement as well as a youth movement. And in fact, one of the leaders of the teaching assistants at that time eventually became head of the AFL-CIO in Wisconsin, David Newby. And uh, David did his research on, you know, revolutionary French workers and, you know, and led the AFL-CIO, which was an anti-war uh, AFL-CIO. So there was a tradition there. Um, the, the other thing is that we talked a lot about the third world in the 60s because we had the Vietnam War, but the, the connection now is much closer since Tahrir Square. They're on, we, we're Skyping with them, talking with them all the time, we're learning from their tactics, they're telling us what to do. Um, the connection between, with globalization, it's a whole different connection between our domestic population and the third world. In the 60s, a lot of the unions were not sympathetic 
to struggles around support for national self-determination. But since their jobs have been exported to these countries to get cheap labor, they have begun to understand you need an international labor movement. And one of the first groups to support Occupy Wall Street were the unions in Egypt that wrote to us. So uh, it's, a different, it's a different situation, but there are uh, traditions. Um, in between, why did the movement not go further? It's a question I've asked myself you know, a million times. Um, things got harder after the 60s. I lived on the Lower East Side for $45 a month, a year I took off from graduate school. Now that apartment would cost me, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand dollars. Um, uh, and the austerity has gotten much worse and during the uh, period between the 60s and now, um, it, you couldn't take off from school so easily. You couldn't support yourself the way I did working one day a week to organize on the Lower East Side. So that austerity, there was an attack on the people that set back uh, the movement, but there wasn't a total big chill as people like Mimi who've been out there the whole time and I've been involved for 45 years. Uh, it didn't all go away. But now there are differences. Because the austerity is much worse, because there's a proletarianization even of college professors. My union is one of the most progressive unions in the city and it was the first union to come to Occupy Wall Street and we've endorsed it. Um, because we're facing budget cuts and attacks all the time and attacks on our union. Uh, just one or other um, point, uh, it, which is there is tremendous support in the general assemblies for the struggles of workers. I make reports every day on what this working group on reaching out to and supporting workers is doing and there's great excitement about it. And what's happened now is that the labor unions have gotten excited about it. They see a potential. They see a potential, a way that the most progressive forces in the labor movement can form a coalition around involvement with Occupy Wall Street. I've been talking to them about that. I've been talking to people at the DWU who may be breaking the Taylor Law again in a couple of months and will need a lot of support. Um, and um, they, have also taken more radical positions. Trumpka, the head of the AFL-CIO, rails against the corporations now, rails against the 1% and their tax breaks. So it is much easier to relate to the labor movement than we did when the labor movement under uh, Meany and then uh, Kirkland was pro-war. Um, we would like to, we'd like to introduce a late coming panelist. Uh, Vlad, had, uh, Yes, okay, great. It is a media activist. We're so, he, we're so honored. He's a former derivatives trader, credit derivatives specialist for 15 years, and among many other things, he set up one of our biggest tools, which is global Revo the Global Revolution live stream, which as you see is streaming right, live right now. This, these are people who are marching downtown, and these are all the people who are talking about it all over the world at this point. And right now we have uh, 5,200 viewers and growing. So if you'd like to speak to that. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the, uh, just a brief history of how this came to be and where it's going in the context of not just uh, this occupation of, of Wall Street, occupation of this action on Wall Street, which is basically take the square action, and other take the square actions which are happening around the world and have been happening since the uh, Arab Spring began. So. Uh, my per I can only speak from personal experience. I'm not an academic, I'm a practitioner. So uh, my personal experience with this was basically the M15 revolution in Madrid that started in April. And I was there for that and I was one of the people who put together the, the media center there and actually launched the Spanish Revolution TV channel known as Spanish Revolution so on live stream. And it was used as a tactical weapon for the movement to short circuit the spin by corporate media. Because we were putting out a real time narrative that we actually brought together a collective of more and more talented people to work on together and frame, 
it became harder and harder for the mainstream press or people who did not like us to lie about us. It made it much harder for them to define us. And we've been trying to do this for years and years and years, for 10 years. And we could never do it. I mean, the closest we got was probably in G20 in 2009. We actually did paint the convention as... What? Okay. <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> it's all day long. Anyway, yeah, no, no, if you notice, I wasn't... Uh, uh, where was I? I'm sorry. It took you 10 years to all right, so to make a long story short, this time we redefined the game finally because uh, we did two things. We didn't allow them to really lie about us all that much because there's constant narrative that tells the opposite of whatever lies they make. So you have the instantly verifiable fact check on Fox, on Fox News that's just there. That exists in the pre-recorded video that was shot from the same moment where they... So you have people watching corporate media and calling them out on, on the lies instantaneously. But beyond that, uh, we create a situation where they can't physically destroy us very easily by uh, broadcasting in real time and giving all these occupations or whatever actions, ability to broadcast in real time, not just somewhere on the internet, but somewhere on the internet where everyone is watching. We're creating one channel specifically, and the channel is virtual. It just gets spread through Twitter. So if they shut us down, other people can start another version of the same thing. It is highly replicatable. But the idea is if you are occupying the square, and there's 2,000 cops massed on four, four, four blocks all around you. And they basically, your scouts are telling you, you know, that's what we have. It's not like, there's no central organization, but we're spreading information. So you, you're sitting there, you know that some people overheard, some people among the police, they're waiting for nightfall so there wouldn't be too much light. You have, to create, you can, you have an option right now, instead of just calling your friends and saying, what the fuck we do? to create a scene, a visual scene, where you stream this information that's happening live, and suddenly thousands of people are watching it, and the people on the other side who are thinking of coming in and beating you up. When I tried to access OccupyWallStreet.org today, I was blocked. And Norton told me the reason I was blocked is that there were scams. And people were putting out right away that there were not scams, that the, the actions that they were calling scams were in fact happening. I was able to get it in another way. There's a culture war going on, but those are details. What we're talking about here is the institution of a new platform. By creating basically an anarchist, it's not anarchist in like, let's break a window anarchist. We're talking about non-hierarchical, self-governing, collective, worldwide, that takes all this information and puts it out. We're basically creating the, the, the new Al Jazeera that will be completely democratic. Well, you'll go beyond all of zero, but that's, yeah, that's the idea, I think. And a lot of people have this idea. We're developing right now. So for, for, for the October 15th is the next time where the whole world is going to be doing something together. September 17th was the previous one. The, the September 17th take the Wall Street action was done in 64 cities around the world. Mm. I think there's a lot more cities plugged in into the October 15th, which is what can, can, will be probably considered if it goes through the beginning of the global revolution. People are going to go and take the squares in a lot of places at the same time. So what we're doing right now is we're teaching all these people all around the world on how to get into our channel. So the channel on October 15th, if, if, to some degree, it might be a total mess, but to some degree, <laughs> we'll feature all these feeds coming in from everywhere, and we're going to be trying to figure out, we're setting up chat rooms on IRC and so on to figure out how to actually manage it in a non-hierarchical mm. manner. Great. Do just go to the web, right? Okay, we actually just got the domain name, globalrevolution.tv, and that image will be on there. On where? When you will go to the website, globalrevolution.tv. Oh, Global Global it's up there. It's not, the, okay, the, what you see. Everybody knows how to, like, it's not up to speed on. So I didn't have the link memorized, but I just it's Google right? live stream Global Revolution. It's, it's livestream.com right? at Global Revolution. Yeah, slash Global Revolution. But it's not an app, it's a slash. Right. Yeah, if you just type, I get if you it. just type occupation, <laughs> Occupy Wall Street, a live stream, you've got a few choices of where to see it. Yeah. It's not only on this website or either. It's a bit of, what I was going to say is we're setting up a website. We're setting up a website that will have that stream and all the other streams coming in from all over the world as well. So you're not just like, limited to one channel. It's going to be multi-channel. Yeah. The bottom line is this, is, this gives us the power to tell our story by our own people without the spin. It's so hard to lie against this.
there needs to be a halt in the production system. I mean, this is all good to spread the word around. Wonderful, it's a wonderful beginning. And we are now hearing the frustration of all people around America. What would you say? What did, I don't understand your first sentence. What, what do you say? Do you think that the next step should be a halt? A walk, I mean, an effort, an effort to halt the system, because that's the only way the capital owners will be really hearing, hearing the complaints. This is wonderful. I please don't think that we're not. I'm talking critical enough for that yet. The consciousness isn't high enough, but it's very interesting that in Madison, after the bill passed, the Central Labor Council of Southeastern Wisconsin passed a resolution that a general strike might be necessary and it would be considered. So there they were authorized enough for it to be considered. Our labor was not at that stage. Something else to add to that, right? Chris, me? Yes. Uh, well, I, I, know, I was thinking about a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of things. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I'd like, you know, I'm really glad you're talking, but you know, I, I can speak as an observer of the occupation of Wall Street because I haven't been a participant. I, I can speak as an observer of the occupation. I, my participation has been limited to actually giving giving two talks there, and 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 it's but it's part of the process of the self organization that was going on there. I think out of an independent subcommittee, even a group contacted me, something known as the op open forum on the economy. Yeah, and we're going to be having open forums every night at six o'clock. Yes, that's that's yes. That, and, and it's on one, one of the wonderful kind of self organizations which is going to emphasize the self-organization. And for those of actually I know our history of, of Marxism, that's one of the visions that Marx actually had of what a revolution was. It's a self-organization of the working class. And it, it, that's one of the key, ele key, key, key elements in what we're talking about, you know, making a revolution. It's where you don't rely upon the mass media to tell you what to do. Uh, you do it yourself. You, you don't, you know, because you know you're going to be lied to, because you are going to be lied to. And, 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 and I think that's what I, what's remarkable about this space, and it's a limited space geographically, of, of the square which is being occupied. It feels free, and it actually is free. That's a remarkable thing about it politically. And, and it, 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 in a certain sense, Brian Lehrer on, on uh, WNYC may ask a stupid question last Monday. Well, they're making a whole variety of demands. Isn't that wrong? Aren't they mixing the message? And I thought, no. I thought the next opposite of the case, what's remarkable about it, they're making a plurality of messages, a variety of messages, but the fact that they're done to the occupation of Wall Street makes it makes all the difference because it's a it's a rural it's a rural political statement, it's about conditions of power. And you have the police bamboozled because I didn't know I didn't know about the twenty four hour business, but that's key. If you did it in any city park in New York City, they'd be able to kick you out because all city parks close. But because it's loophole, they have a loose, loose space. You got lucky. And, and, they, and they got lucky. I don't know if you keep uh, whoever spied parks do, do that. I was on the title. That was a key, key, key. We found out, that, moreover, that there's a law that you can't gather in more than 20 people in a city park. That's well, that's, that's, that's so there's all these, all these restrictions. And nonetheless, what you see here, is, and one of the thing, things that our, I find our chief of police complained about is that you guys do not seek a permit to have a march. Occupy you know, and I think, I think it's amazing that this, almost the daring, daring of this has people non plus. And frankly, uh, I walked up from, from, from Wall Street. I saw the stock exchange. I used to work there. I've never seen I've never seen the stock exchange so so wound up and tight in terms of security in my life. And I think I think I think it's because they ha the powers that be have no idea to make of what's going on there because it doesn't calculate as far as they're concerned because it's a different way of thinking more than that, not only of, of uh, seeing and thinking, it's a different practice. How far it can go, I don't know. And I think, I think that there is, there is, we all cannot occupy Wall Street. We all cannot, go, we all cannot go there. But in, in term, terms of a, of a tactic, not necessarily as a strategy, but in terms of a tactic, this, this conjuncture is profoundly important, it's profoundly important to support. One of the things I noted that was really brilliant about them is that not only maybe maybe you have a lot to do with this, but 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 not not only were 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 unions supporting you, 
but, but the occupation people were supporting unions and reaching out, and that in some sense it became kind of a, a strike center for, for kind of supporting strike activities. We throughout, had a couple of through, really fun through, actions. Throughout the, city, throughout, throughout, the, throughout the city, and I think, I think each one of us individuals should go down there and not simply visit, we should go down there and participate. I wish I could go to a general, general assembly. I can't because I have school kids and, and we have to go home and they have to get, get to sleep. That's one of the kind of limitations you have to, have to think, think, think about. Uh, I have dragged them down, down there several times and I dragged them down one evening when I, when I ga ga gave a talk and they got bored and they're, well, they complained because they got photographed too much, which is actually I in a prison of their privacy, actually. Well, that's another story. Okay. I was a, a small project because I'm inside the occupation pretty much on the, on the constant basis, so I can tell you guys, we're building systems. I don't know who came up with the idea, but it's, I think it's clever. It's not up yet, but it'll be up within days, or maybe it's up already. I haven't been there for, t for 20 hours. But uh, every working group is getting a, uh, a phone. Oh yeah, that's great. And this is the, every working group. So how, how does, such, maybe just take one minute to explain how things are organized in the square? It, we have these working groups. We it's explain. a working group. It's not the working group, it's the, it's the phone, yeah. Oh, we, we're talking about when you go to the information booth at one of the three points in the square, they're going to have a directory of telephone numbers for you to call, for you to plug in. Yes. And a list of emails <laughs> for you to call and plug in. And eventually, once we navigate security issues which have been raised, which we don't know because people are kind of paranoid because we've been getting a lot of, you know, it, we, we had a lot of surreal experiences that I can spend hours of you describing with, 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 with federal law enforcement. Uh, we're going to have a directory with emails, web pages, and phone numbers of every single working group of this occupation. And these work groups are open. They're not closed meetings. Everything is done with complete transparency. We're creating a forum for public debate about our future by all of society. There's gonna be a few th select things which will be secure. Identity of people who've been arrested, for example. There'll be special committee forum to deal with just that because that cannot be public. So not public information, yes, we can protect the movement, right? We're not stupid. But the fundamental things of what demands we make about our future as a movement, they're open to everyone. They're going to operate by idea of consensus. And we still need to think about how that consensus gets arrived at. Is it 90%? Is it 100? How far do we go? We should learn from experience with our, with our colleagues in Spain, who just did M15, who had full consensus, 100% percent they going for, and the, and the state used that to undermine them. Because they, had people, they sent people in every single working to block mm. everything. I mean, this is just something we should be bringing, uh, by the way, people from Spain and people from Greece who will be doing this in here, flying, we should be raising money to do that because we need the experience of people like us who've already been through something similar because the only way we can learn is to learn from experience of others and there's been people in Egypt who went through it, people in Spain and people in Greece. We actually had a forum with someone from Spain uh, night before last. We need to bring those people and plug them into the working groups. Yeah, so well, I think he is. He's working in the one that's planning forums. I just wanted to say, since uh, it was mentioned that we've been doing things with labor. The first thing we did is we went on the Verizon picket lines before September 17th. Verizon has now come to us and encouraged us. So we had a march the other day. Instead of going to Wall Street, we went to the Verizon stores and were disruptive. Uh, we went to a Teamster local at that lux luxury auction house, Sotheby's, Sotheby's, where people buy $100,000 paintings and we kind of snuck ourselves into the auction and disrupted it every 20 minutes. Somebody would say how much money they were making, how they had locked out their workers, how they wanted to cut their wages and uh, get rid of their pensions and wouldn't uh, negotiate a contract. So we've been doing a lot of stuff. We marched to the postal workers rally. Police tried to stop us, we got there. We're doing a lot. Okay, we have a few minutes left, and before we open it up for questions, I just want to reiterate how technologically savvy this group is, and that we have three-minute videos that are coming out daily from Vlad's team, or the media team. Media. And I actually have nothing to do with it. There's another group now that's self-organization that's focusing on creating daily recaps. They're amazing, and so it's a three-minute video. I want to show it to you guys if you can. Can you hit the lights there? I started organizing my kitchen this weekend. 
and go on invest in China and India. No, it's the creditors, the bondholders who bondholders, the creditors of the bank. They basically said there's too much debt. We don't want it now that we're safe, and there, there, therefore, we're going to find find a way of getting out of this crisis. Interesting enough, and we all know this is is a why don't they consider to be tax increased revenue? Is if it were only a budgetary crisis. It's not simply budgetary crisis. All these class issues are are coming underway. In the United States, we know at least since Ronald Reagan became president, it's been the policy to tax starve our state. So in some sense, what this crisis now is simply finally trying to complete the neoliberal revolution as far as Stockman back there. You know, when Reagan first came up with Stockman, I forget his first name, but he said, David, he, David Stockman, Stockman, he said, you know, we're going to starve the state so we can cut, cut social spending. Finally, they're using this economic crisis to do this. And I've had debates with my wife. Whether or not they're scared and they're desperate or they're being real aggressive. And I think it's both. Yes. I think it's clearly both because, you know, things aren't really going right for them. You know, things are going together, but the economy is really unstable. And I don't think they can get, get the economy going globally until they get, I mean, the powers that be capital so they get this debt crisis behind it. And the only way they want to get the debt, debt house behind it is going through this neoliberal revolution. Yeah. Can I jump of, of, all, you know, of all the austerity and stuff, and John and I, you know, were on the first front line, we felt like this, trying to resist this stuff in, in, on a micro basis in New York City. So that was after all the federal state cuts have already come through. Uh, yeah, I think basically the global, the giant global corporations, um, unable to see before further than three months out because they work quarterly and they have to they have to make their shareholders happy every three every three three months and it's like a uh, it's just a downward spiral that that they're stuck in we're stuck in they the the dominant media message is supply side economics no matter how it doesn't work over and over and over again the only solution anybody can come up with is give more money to the rich mm -hmm. and the rich don't the and the giant corporations don't mind so they keep using a little bit of that money to get the governments all of the governments around the world to send them more money and then they use a little bit of that money to get the governments to send them more money. So all the wealth is going to squish up to the top. And the economy is not driven by supply. It's driven by demand. If people have money to spend, then they will go to the store. And when the store can't supply everything that people want, they will get investors, right? But the... the the whole system is skewed to this crazy system that doesn't work. So that's why I started to panic. I mean, I fo I've been following this from the sidelines for a long time, and when I saw it really coming to a head, and that and that the 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 thing in 2008 didn't scare everybody into action. I mean, I thought this was going to happen two years, three years ago. You know what I mean? What was everybody waiting for? <coughs> and my, my personal one demand is get off your couch, get informed, take the street, and let's get this done. Because otherwise, the whole world economy is going to implode. I don't see, I don't see a, a, an easy way out of this. Um, I think we need millions of people on the street. I think we need everybody who's not in the 1% on the street. I'm hoping for maybe 5% of the U.S. population, which is about 13 million people. I think that's the minimum that we need in order to fight global corporations that are taking over the world. And have, they, they can't be arrested, they can't be executed, they can't be on a jury, they can't, um, they, ca they can't have a friend they can't, they, can't, they can't do anything that a person does, but the Supreme Court calls them a person. They can't serve on a jury, but they're people. No, they have a lot of associates, right? They got a lot of connections, right? They're well connected, they're well financed, and they have a hierarchical system that for oppression works really well. 
the rest of us we need to get freaking together and stop this if you if you have any influence anywhere i beg you help us to stop this don't just go home okay don't just go home help us to stop this before it's too late okay there are kids in the park right now who are already planning to go on the occupy together world tour so they're going to be going across the u.s and helping other groups that are starting up so we already have some scouts, uh, Gary, Roland, and actually Anderson are just went from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. They're going to stay in Washington a few days and they're going to the South to train people in the General Assembly.